of contemporary interest to people around the world. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is time again for Nigeria to go to the polls to elect the next set of leaders. The national election which will take place in the first quarter of 2023 can be considered as especially significant in Nigeria's quest for democratic consolidation. The 2023 election will be taking place on the back of almost 25 years of unbroken civilian rule. That's a record. It is a record for the country which is worth entrenching and celebrating. Every election, wherever it is held, is important to the people or entity directly concerned. It is also important to the global democracy community as well. Equally, there are also countries whose elections, on account of their weight and influence, carry wider implications beyond their immediate geographical boundaries. Nigeria is one of such countries. One area where in the government of the All Progressive Congress, APC, distinguished itself is election management. Today, elections are more credible than ever since the return of democracy since 1999. Recent statutory engagements, enactment, and allowing the use of technology, the tools for the accreditation of voters and transmission of results, we deliver the fairest and freest election in our nation's history. This is particularly important because the next president of Nigeria, we have some tough choices to make and will not be able to do so with questionable electoral mandate. Ballot security and election violence are areas where there is cause for concern. There is an en emerging trend of attacks against the personnel and infrastructure of the Independent National Electoral Commission in part of the country. At the same time, political conversations on social media have become more laced with violent rhetoric and threats of violence, retaliation against those opposing, perceived as opposing partitions. I stand firmly against all form of electoral violence and intimidation. Having spent most of my career in political opposition, I have long, I have long fought against electoral malpractice. Any attempt to extinguish the legitimacy of choice of voters, I will continue to do so, I promise. I have by all, all my fellow concerns in this, in this election to do the same. Let the sovereign will of the people decide the path of our nation. And let this election be determined by voters, making their choice freely rather than domineering intimidation and trouble some few. Indeed, there's more than a person interest in Nigeria. Politics generally and upcoming elections in particular for several reasons. For one, as Africa's most populous country and the continent's largest economy, 
it is generally acknowledged that portions of the African continent and indeed the black race is tied directly to the health of Nigeria. Also, the Nigerian elections of 2023 are coming up at a time when the country's immediate geographical neighborhood of West Africa and Central Africa is undergoing serious political turmoil that has manifested itself in the incursion of the military to power in a number of countries. In spite of legitimate concerns being expressed by observers, Nigerians are resolutely committed to democracy, regardless of their political differences. At the best of times, and with reference to its foreign policy orientation since independence in 1960, and since the end of its civil war in 1970, Nigeria has always crafted its domestic national security and economic development uh, policies with some strategic foreign policy imperatives in mind. There is a close connection between domestic development and national security. On one hand, on the hand to prosper at home in peace and stability, Nigeria needs to uphold its national security, unity, territorial integrity, sovereign independence, and safety as well as being well-being of its people. On the other hand, to secure itself, Nigeria not only requires to build and enhance the capacity of its armed forces, but also the welfare and well-being of its citizens. Though a commitment to the promotion of human security, the country has attempted through government and other successes government interface national security and economic development as two sides of the same coin, focusing equally on food sufficiency and sustainable development. Nigeria shares direct land borders with four African countries, with whose people Nigeria also share historical and cultural affinities. This effectively means that the relationship between Nigeria and its immediate neighbor, neighbors is such that it's, it's more than just a geographical expression. To be fully secured at home, Nigeria has always believed it must be the brother's keeper. It was out of this understanding that African premier regional economic community, the ECOWAS, was established in 1975. Uniquely, ECOWAS had embedded in its mandate the promotion of regional economy, integration as a good in its own right, and in addition, understood sub-regional peace and security. I am convinced, as I am sure of most of us are, that the broad principle that enabled successive Nigerian government to interface this development and security and established an organic link between the national security and economic development with regional peace and prosperity it is both impeccable and remains relevant. It is an approach which I commit myself to upholding and advancing, I promise you. The challenges which we have, which has, have 
manifested themselves with the regard to our national and regional development and security trajectories are very well known to all of us here. Radical extremist violence, terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, human trafficking, trafficking in weapons, trafficking in drugs, climate change, resource-driven conflicts, etc., etc. Most and mostly manifesting initially in a national problem. These challenges evolved over time into transborder and multinational challenges. As a people, we are still counting the cost of challenges which different and harmed criminal groups are posing to Nigeria and regional development. We know thousands of lives have been lost and continue to be wasted. We know that various infrastructure assets built at a huge cost have been destroyed in, de in deliberate act of reckless vandalism. We see the thousands of people who have been internally displaced at home or forced into refugee camps abroad. With farming activities disrupted, we have seen shortages of food items and food price inflation that are further undermining human security. I can go on and on in enumerating the costs that have been and are still being inflicted on mass of the people by the crisis of insecurity. To respond meaningfully to the discontent and to redress the many indications arising from them, we must begin by reminding ourselves of the old dictum. Foreign policy is but a continuation of domestic policy. As a first step, we must recalibrate domestic policy in order to revamp the foundation on which our need to pursue human security rests. At one level, this will mean the pursuit with the renewed vigor of growth promoting employment creation and poverty eradication policies at home as outlined in my renewed hope 23. That is the action plan for a better Nigeria as adopted by my political party. The present administration has invested heavily in agriculture, providing loans, and expanding the country's total area of cultivated land. We will build on this, but our focus will be on using technology and expert, uh, expertise to accelerate growth and development by providing the critical infrastructure necessary to achieve the commodity transformation in the agricultural value chain. Roads, rail, access to ports, the storage and infrastructure are what we require to radically transform the agricultural sector and increase the value to the nation, provided this be the area of our focus so that the full potential of our agroeconomy can be achieved and we can reap the benefits in jobs, improved economy, opportunities and increased prosperity. Fixing the perennial redo of energy supply is another priority. There's no version of the world where Nigeria's ambition 
for itself can be achieved without solving the problem of how to provide energy to homes and businesses across the country. It is time to recognize that the centralized approach, approach to energy policy infrastructure is not an optimal arrangement, and it is unlikely to improve by mere tinkering around the sites. The federal government, as regulator, an operator, and the price fixer, is a broken model. We are sure to fix this, and we are determined to do so, I promise you. We have privatized the power distribution in Nigeria and generation to a certain degree. What we need to do going forward is to improve the enabling environment and further reform the legal regulatory framework to attract more private investment in the sector as we have experienced in the telecom industry. My belief that the private sector is the engine of economic progress is evident and documented. However, fundamental flaws with the basic design of our national economy imperil the private sector from playing the role it ought to and adding the value it is capable of doing. In this instance, the government must act as a catalyst. We shall do this on all fronts. We will address the conflict between monetary and physical policies. Budgeting will be based upon the projected spending level needed to push the re-annual growth rate above 7%. We will reduce the unemployment rate so that we can double the economy in 10 years. At another level, we must learn to make foreign policy work better for our domestic, social, economic, and political priorities. To do so, our foreign policy apparatus we need to be renewed to take full advantage of global initiatives and processes that work for us and tally with our domestic priorities. In this instance, I applaud the outcome of the COP27 that recently ended in Egypt. In acknowledging the legitimate claim of Global South, on climate action. In accepting adaptation and energy transition principles, including the treatment of gas as a transition for we work more on this. We will work to accelerate investment in gas production, and we are committed to enhancing domestic and global energy security. Furthermore, beyond what we do nationally, we must also become much bolder as Africans in our effort at regional and continental integration and security. In this regard, we are fully committed to the African Union's Agenda 2063 for continental transformation. Amidst the changes taking place and the global order, the primary duty of leadership in Nigeria, and I dare say, all Africa, is how within a vision of national development and security 
that is human-centered, not foreign policy that is crafted to fit the priorities of rebirth and accelerated progress. This is the task to which my colleague and I have committed ourselves as part of a broader project of leveraging our national assets and natural endowment to nurture and to project a, re, a renewed Nigeria that will be responsible, responsive, and respected driver of prosperity and harmony in Africa around, around the world. I am convinced that the Nigerian people will go to the polls in a few short months and give me their mandate. I'm ready to lead and govern the country. I will return here with, I will re <laughs> return here to interact with you when the elections are over. I will come, not with a long list of priorities for the future, but with a plan for the collaboration and the best interests of the country. I love the country I love and dedicate myself to for a lifetime. I hope you will receive me then as gracious as you are today. Nigeria is part of the global community, ready to accelerate its growth and committed to democracy, freedom, and understanding around the world. When we stick to it, democracy is not e easy to manage, to promote. We have seen challenges around and across the world, but we are up to the task. Thank you.